Is Russia's encirclement of Bakhmut nearly complete? And does Ukraine need to start its withdrawal from the city imminently? Also, is Russia finally forecasting uh, the coming Ukrainian counteroffensive? And just how much are they worried about it? I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. It's March 14th, 2023. This is your daily Ukraine update. Let's get into it. Okay, first, when we look at the control map, the biggest changes are here in Bakhmut. And while the advance of Russian forces is relatively small, it is pretty crucial. As you guys can see, this key roadway running to Ivansky uh, is now literally within at the shortest point within 300 meters of Russian forces. That's small arms range. Um, so it is effectively cut off, I would say. So combine that with the fact that it is this secondary escape route is also extremely uh, close to Russian forces. And you have a situation where those remaining in Bakhmut need to withdraw, I would say, in the very, very near future, um, barring some sort of Ukrainian counterattack to push Russian forces back. Um, this this threat of encirclement is considerable, and it's not even clear now that anything beyond light infantry troops will be able to conduct an exfil, again, given the m amount of men and material that would have to pass through these roadways uh, to effect a complete withdrawal. Um, when we look at the combat map, you can see Russia has remained very busy, um, literally is continuing to push in Volodar all along the Donetsk region, um, and of course in not just Bakhmut, but this northern prong, this northern surge through the city, um, they're also really going hard, trying to push and gain new territory in order to increasingly threaten the larger environment. Um, when we see, uh, of course, the Ministry of Defense of the United Kingdom is uh, talking about shell rationing, uh, the fact that Russia, again, is uh, using sh old munition stock, which probably had been categorized as unfit for use, um, and that they're continuing to ration them deliberately. Uh, that would explain at least why you're seeing such limited gains along Kremina Lyman, Savote, um, in Donetsk, and why you're seeing only them able to make meaningful gains uh, outside of Bakhmut. It, it could be because, again, when you look at the shelling distribution, you can see that the shelling is literally concentrated only in the Bakhmut area. Um, all of these other places, right? Well, there's there's some, well, I guess they're reporting some shelling, but it's, I imagine the volume is probably concentrated in Bakhmut itself. Um, what's most interesting to me is Russian mill bloggers are continuing to speculate about a potential Ukrainian counteroffensive in the South. Um, and they seem to have uh, caught up to the same analysis that I've been doing, which is that uh, the Berdyansk Melitopol or Mariupol axes are the two most likely axes for a Ukrainian uh, counteroffensive. Um, and you can obviously see why, right? One, the Melitopol axis. It just it it is a lot of open terrain. It favors armored uh, maneuver warfare um, or mechanized warfare, and also it's a uh, not. It has this natural barrier in the form of this reservoir here, this inlet, um, and this uh, river or reservoir here, and so it means that you could effectively split the invasion force in two by seizing just around a hundred kilometers of territory. Um, less so if you rely on some of these natural barriers like these rivers. As we've seen, they form very strong defensive lines. So it, it would even be possible to sit there and go from this point, taking this uh, everything, for example, um, east of this river here and using that as a natural barrier and kind of clearing this whole area. Um, and then, of course, also launching a concurrent attack in Mariupol um, or an alternative 
might be Mariupol. As you can see, the terrain a little bit more restrictive, um, but has a large number again of these rivers that can form natural barriers. And then potentially you could carve off this large chunk of the um, occupy, Russian occupy, occupation, uh, splitting Crimea and the remaining of, remainder of Kherson and the Luhansk and remainder of Donetsk. Um, Russian forces or Russian mill bloggers seem to be talking about the same thing. Um, there is some fear that they will actually be able to do a southern uh, push and and a push along Kupiansk, uh, Savote, or another area where uh, or, or open a second front. Uh, we sort of talked about this in Kharkiv, where it was about pushing in several directions and seeing where the breakthrough eventually happened and then committing your offensive to that breakthrough. Uh, but it still is fascinating to see, again, how much speculation is happening on both sides about the coming Ukrainian counteroffensive, which is hopefully soon. Anyway, guys, that is all I had for you for today. Of course, if you want access to the uncensored combat video breakdowns, the kind of thing that YouTube won't let me show you, uh, you know, GoPro footage and drone strike, drone footage and all, all of that stuff, I do all those breakdowns on the Patreon. Uh, it's also the way to support the channel without me having to rely on YouTube and their questionable censorship and monetization policies. Thanks to my Colonel Tier patrons. Thanks to my Lieutenant Tier patrons. And thanks to all you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.